Hey, how you doing? Hey, this is going to have a special here today. Oh, look. Well, seven pot boot, or no, actually this is a yellow boot Jalokia from Ford Fiery Foods and Plants. This is part one. I'm going to go ahead and eat this. Because it's good. Now, yeah, that's a real good pepper. That was a yellow boot Jalokia. That's a good pepper. Good tasting. It's a good boot. It's a little windy out here. You'll have to excuse me. Um, what I got is a double treat. Told uh, all my peeps over there on Pepper Bastards. That was just a prelude into what I'm really going to do. Which is... Let's take a look here. You see these plants here? I really like them. And when you're looking at right here, and when you see right there, that is a Trinidad Butch tea. Oh yeah, and I have a little moisture meter in there. Yeah, this is something that I think all of us as growers, good idea. See that? It needs water. I keep them dry like that. Especially when I'm about to do what I'm going to do, which is show you all how I overwinter plants. I'm not going to do this particular one right now, but this is a reaper. Okay. Now, yeah, eating that seven pot or that uh, yellow boot, I was just playing around. Uh, but this is not playing around. Um, getting back to what we're here for and that's growing super hot peppers and you know trying trying to show some kind of education as to how we go about doing it uh, tools I'm going to be using today well this is optional this is a pair of scissors these are not optional you're going to need some some good clips some good shears uh, they, they have a really good bite to them uh, you you get what you what you're comfortable with if you like the, the needle nose uh, I like to keep this handy uh, this is what I'm going to be stirring up my soil today those are essential you're going to need those remember when I talked about this it was uh, we're going to trim down a root ball and we're also going to prep the plant for uh, uh, for overwintering. So this is how I do it. Is it the way that everybody can do it? No, it can be done different ways. One thing you are going to want is some soil of your own preference. My particular preference is black gold. This particular brand is a waterhold cocoa blend potting soil. Uh, so in a sense, it, what it has is uh, coconut husk in it to help with that holding of the water. Uh, whenever I pull a plant up like this, I like to give it some fresh soil as a bedding soil. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the pot is not a big pot, so you have to keep that root ball uh, under control and when your growing season is done now that's not to say that this plant here that we're dealing with I don't know if you can see this it's still got tons of flowers the problem this year was is that I had to plant too late okay so instead of me killing this plant I want to overwinter it and get an early start next year on my planting season. So, uh, to give you an idea of some of the other items I'm going to be using, uh, I'm a big fan of Epsom salt. And uh, in this particular blend, during the, during the season, I like using the, yeah, I'm a Earth Juice and uh, Dr. Earth, but uh, 
this sea blast I use in the water, very water soluble, very good stuff. But in the soil I'm going to mix some of this rainbow mix uh, growing blend and but uh, and, and in the water I'm going to have the Epsom salt. Now this is going to be quite minor because I'm also adding uh, some bone meal to the mix into the bottom of the hole and also I'm going to be mixing a little bit of blood meal in here. Follow the directions of the manufacturer when you put this in. On uh, Dr. Earth particularly it tells you how to mix uh, for both in regular soil and in pots which I like doing mine in pots. So one of the other tools you're going to want a watering jug yeah that way you can water the bottom of that hole now if if you've been uh, with us for a while you'll know one thing in this bag you see that's perlite now whether it's vermiculite perlite whatever there's a reason I'm doing this this is some of that cocoa blend that that I that you see there very it's a very rich soil Nice and airy, very very uh, rich soil like I said. Now with that I want to go ahead and mix in some of my perlite because I want it more airy. I want it to drain very well. Uh, I've already added a little bit of compost to this but this cocoa blend um, from black gold is a very good soil. I've come to like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and that's what I've been planting with all my plants this year. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to start out, obviously. Now, sorry if you lose me here because I'm, I'm kind of makeshift in this. So, uh, I'm going to back it up. You may have trouble hearing me. I'm hoping that you can hear me as I do this. Okay, sorry. All right, so what we're going to do here, I've got my, my plant here, and uh, phase one. Uh, I, I've got a lot of vegetation to work with. This is a lot of green vegetation, and as you've seen here, I was very light in my, in my moisture, but I'm going to be pretty damp when I finish this. It's not winter for me yet, however, it's going to be coming up soon. One thing you don't ever want to do, don't ever go out without marking it. Now, this particular one, it's marked on here, on the pot, and it's also marked here. But, make sure that you have it marked. So, a little bit thick on the foliage, and we're going to cut it back to the nodes. Now, I'm going to bring you in close here. What I want to look for is a growth point on this, or, or you don't want to cut it back to the point where there is no leaves. I don't know how well you're going to see this, but you're going to cut back and you're going to leave a little bit of the foliage. You can see where this Y is off, right here where the Y is, you know, and, and what I'm going to do is now up here I got another Y, and I'm going to cut it off. Yeah, everybody can start crying now because I'm going to start cutting it back. You can see those cuttings that I'm pulling out of there. You know, and now you look at that. Still got buds on there. Hey, here's the thing. You either want to save the plant for next year or you're going to let it die when the winter frost hits it. The first frost that hits these plants are going to kill them. So you have to get them prepped before that hits. So, what we're going to do, we're just going to keep cutting back. Sadly, I'm going to pull off all the buds. I don't want it to produce. If there's a formation already on it, if you've got some on there that are developed, leave them on and let them finish developing. They're going to, all the energy is going to get forced into those. So, I'm going to cut these back, like I said. Find good points to cut them. Cutting them back. Yeah. A 
lot of cutting is going to go on here. Look at that, all that foliage cut. Now, I'm not going to kill it, but I am going to cut it back quite drastically. I have to leave some foliage on here. Um, you've seen us do a paraxis method where we've cut it back pretty, pretty viciously. And, and cut it way, way back down here, down below. We're not doing that. We need it to have some, we need, we're, we're going to have it go dormant. So, we're going to go ahead and cut this back. We're not going to take it all out, but we're going to take out a good, quite a bit of it. Uh, look for little foliage starts on here. When you do this, don't cut them back so far that they're not going to regrow. get these little foliage starts like this and cut them back. Could you cut it down further? Sure you could. You could cut it way down here. And then you're going to just bush up. I don't want to really bush up. I want it to grow, but I, I want to cut it back. So, I, I am going to cut it back pretty good. Again, I gotta get these flowers out of the way. Pulling out the big boys now. Down here, I'm gonna cut it right back. Look at all that gone. Okay. I'm gonna take this one. Gone. Okay. Come over here now. All these flowers gone. Taking them out. Do you have to? No, but I want it to go dormant. So that's what I'm doing. Cutting it back. Oh, what the heck? We're going to take this one down a little bit. Got a sprout down there. Look at that. I'm gonna cut the top right out of that thing. Yeah, my poor plant. Okay. Anyway. Cutting it down. I'm trimming it way back. You know, there's a big old shoot here. I'm cutting all these shoots back, but I'm not making it bare naked. You can see I still got some foliage down there. That's to help it get some of the uh, recovery. It still needs to collect sunlight. It still needs to um, survive, if you will. And yes, this is a fully blown butch tea, very healthy plant. I want it next year. Cutting it back still. Now, if I did see a bud on here, if I seen an actual pod formation, I would go ahead and uh, I would save that. But as I'm going through here, this is just a plant. It's 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 full right now, but the problem with it is. As I said, is that it? Uh, it was just I planted way too late. That was a good pepper over there, by the way, John Ford. Yeah, over there, Ford's Fiery Foods and Plants. And I see a node here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off to there. And uh, yeah, what the heck? Let's take that one off. I'm going to take that one off. Why not? Yeah. Look at that. That big old plant. It's, it's been uh, cut down quite quite a bit. Um, I left some new starts on it. I 
I'm, I'm still pulling off the buds on it. see or what you can't see is I've got a whole bunch of new forks starting in here that are in here and uh, I, I'm cutting it back quite a bit but it's because it, I want it to be dormant but I don't want to kill it I, I, I want it I want it to be all fresh growth starting up in this spring I'm going to cut off any of the leaves that are old that I just don't you know I don't want it quite a bit out of there now, okay? If you look at it now, compared to when you first seen it, I cut back quite a bit, you know, and could I, I could, I could probably cut it off right down to here and it'd be fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you can see I've cut it out. I left a little foliage. I might cut back a little bit more yet, but, uh, Let's go into phase two here of this part. All right, now that we've got it all cut back the way we want to, it's time to put the next phase in. And yes, you are going to shock a plant, but trust me, when this plant comes back, it's going to be vigorous. Okay, and and it will. It's going to initially come back because of what I'm going to put into it. So. I've got my, my soil here. Now, for a size pot like this, it's asking me for roughly uh, six to eight tablespoons of the blood meal. I'm just pouring, that's about a handful to me. So, I put in my handful. I like that. Handful's done. And I'm going to go ahead and add some bone meal. This is for over the winter, all right? Yes, you could use potash. I mean, what you want to do, bone meal is a very slow release, as you may know. And I'm going to, basically, I'm putting in the same amount. About a good handful. Okay. So, what I've put into there so far, blood meal and bone meal. Now, this rainbow mix is not going to require as much and uh, this is a very good release uh, product. It has bat guano in it, um, some seaweed and, and other products and that's just about maybe I'd say three tablespoons but I'm going to mix it with the, I'm going to amend the soil that I already have in here that I keep light and airy. So, next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and mix in my yeah, perlite, okay? As you can see, this perlite is very airy, very light, fluffy, it's, uh, but what it's going to do, it won't allow my soil to bind, to bind with any of the fines. Um, you don't want it to. So, remember that tool I showed you? Yeah. Go ahead and stir that up. Oop. Sorry about throwing you around like that. You go ahead and stir this in. Okay, you see what's going on there? I'm going to stir in a little bit more now. Another good handful. Sorry about that uh, throwing you on the ground there, but... Uh, 
Next we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add, I added even more. of my perlite. So that's about three handfuls of perlite in there and you can see all the white and mixed in with all those other nutrients. Okay. Um, now that, that, that soil right there is amended and it's ready to mix with my other soil. Next is, uh, is going to be one of the uh, most critical parts. I'm going to take this plant out of the pot and I'm going to cut back the root ball. Yeah, that's a lot to happen with a plant in such a short amount of time. But we're going to go ahead and do it so that I can show you, even with everything I'm doing, this plant is going to make it. And I'll show you in a couple of weeks some pictures of this to show you that, you know, it's going to be okay. These plants are a lot more tolerant than you think they are. We, I know we baby our, our pepper plants along, but... Uh, they're tough. They really are. Okay, now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead over the pot is where I'm at. Let's see if we can get you down here on a different level. Um, hopefully, you can see what's going on there. I've taken this plant right out of the pot. I'm going to go ahead and shake it. Look at that. Get it right out of there. Okay, now you can see that all them roots are bound, okay? It's been growing this summer, doing really well, um, but now it's time. I'm going to go in here, I'm putting it in the bucket, and I'm loosening up some of the soil on it so I can get those roots loose and cut back that root ball, okay? <coughs> Don't worry about doing this to the plant. It's not going to hurt it at this point. It's an adult plant. Okay, but take that uh, picker right here, loosen it up, loosen it up, get that soil broken up, and that's what I'm doing right now, and what I'm doing is scraping up the sides like this, and breaking it up, loosening up the root ball a little bit, okay, because it's going to go back into that same pot with a smaller root ball. Okay. I could go to a bigger root uh, pot, but I don't want to right now. I want to put it back in there and I want it to grow. I could go to bigger ones uh, next year. Nothing to it. Just replant it when you're ready. Okay. Okay, what I'm doing now, poking at it. Poking inside of it, shaking it up a little bit. Harold, you're killing it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. What I'm doing is preserving it. Any pepper plant is perennial. You can, you can continue to grow them. Up to probably, I would recommend up to five years at best, and then after that, it's time I think to uh, concede and, and start a new one off of what you've been growing. That's just my recommendation. There might be somebody out there that's got plants that are much older. Okay. All right. You look at that. Look at that dangling root ball. You see that, right? Yeah. What I'm talking about, getting into trimming back the root ball. I'm going to break the soil away a little bit, okay? And some things are going to happen here now, okay? Break this up a little bit. Okay. This is when we start it, all right? Cut the root ball back. Cut it back. I'm going to go to my little shears.
this is not going into my soil mix. Not done yet. Okay. You, know, you can see that root ball got a lot smaller too. I'll cut it still a little more. Okay, yeah, what I got there is a much smaller root ball than I had, okay, comparative to the bucket, okay, now, next phase. What do I want to do? Oh. Let's go ahead. And we're going to take it over here. And we're going to soak it. Okay. What I'm going to do is I got this little bucket here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up with water. And I'm going to put a little bit of Epsom salt in it. Oh, yes. I am a fan of Epsom salt. I'm going to put a little Epsom salt in there. And we're going to go ahead and soak it. Uh, we haven't had rain here. Now, mind you, it's just a little bit. It's not a lot of Epsom salt. So what I'm going to end up having to do with this one for... Uh, this is what I'm going to be soaking it in. This is not big. But it's big enough for the root ball. Okay? So... I'm going to take this thing, go ahead, I'm filling it up, okay, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and pour this over my root ball, okay, because I want to soak it down a little bit, so, I take this handy dandy thing here and I want to wet down this root ball give it a little bit of moisture if you will uh, hopefully that hose doesn't knock it over the phone and I'm gonna soak it You may have your own way of doing this. You may soak it inside the pot, but this is my initial soak. I want the roots to get a really good drink, but I want it to run off. Okay. Now, you're seeing that I soaked it real good. Water's dripping off of it. Look at that. Just that root ball has been cut down pretty good. The plant itself, I've chopped it down. Yeah, you could chop it down more. But now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it in a fresh bed of soil, okay? So, here we go. Put you back up here so you can see what I'm doing here. This little tray is going to go back under there so I can uh, reset my medium. And put some of the soil in the bottom here. Reset it. All those roots are now out of the soil. We're using clean soil, dry soil, I might add. It's been amended. What I've got here, watch this, I'm going to take my poker again. Set that down for a minute. I want to make sure that all my soils are mixed. There we go. Okay. Any roots that fell in, I'm pulling out, by the way. I want nice, clean, dry soil. Okay. So, right now, 
I'm reestablishing this pot. Okay. Now, what I want to do is make sure that when I put it in, I figure out where it is. And I want to be just a little bit, I want that root ball buried just a little lower than it was so that those roots are completely covered. Okay. All right. Once we got that, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go and get my water bucket. I got my water bucket here. And I'm going to go ahead and moisten that soil down. To this point, we've cut back the root ball. We've cut back the plant, as you all could see, quite drastically. Now, I'm, I'm watering down. Remember, my soil's been amended. And, uh, Plants already had a root ball bath um, with Epsom salt, and I'm going to come at it again. I'm going to put some Epsom salt, I don't know, just enough to coat the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead, water that in just a little more, that it's not wet, it's damp. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm packing new soil in around this root ball. Okay. Take your fingers, poke down into there, get it worked in there. Okay. This is really good, uh, a really good soil mix. It's going to I really let the plant thrive be protected through the winter so uh, you know I'm not worried about the plant making it you guys have seen I've done some pretty drastic things to it but we're messing with an adult plant we're not messing with a baby here this plant's established This way you see, I'll do it before you do it, and you'll know that they're going to make it. I'd tell you to do something I wouldn't do myself. That wouldn't be right, would it now? Okay, so if we go ahead and, you know, i got to be careful with the leaf foliage that I have. I want to protect it. And I'm going to lift it and move it up into there and pack it. Because up here in Washington, it's starting to get cold, too. I want to protect my plants and get them ready for overwinter. This makes it uh, less room that is needed. You know, if you have those big, full plants, you're not going to be able to. Uh, besides that, most of that foliage is going to die off anyway. So you get some nice, strong, new foliage. Okay. All right, so what we've done there, and I've packed it right up to the, I'm taking it up near the top of the pot. I want a nice, full, fresh soil. Okay. All right, now we got it all. As you can see here, I'm gonna show you. We filled it up nice and full and we're going to go ahead and water it in it's a final phase now it's going to take quite a bit it's going to be all right we want to water it down good the first time because it's going to be in shock 
granted this water is not just water. I have Epsom salt in it. And I have a little bit of my sea blast in it. Okay. Sea blast. Also with back one on and seaweed. Okay. Yeah. What we gonna do? I'm gonna move it back over here. Back over to where the plants are. Alright. Now you can see I really cut her back. Uh, really gave it a, a, a haircut if you will but you know what in the end this plant is going to do better uh, than, it, than it would have if I would have left it now that's how I overwinter my plants I cut back the root ball first I cut back all the foliage got it back quite a bit take off any inferior leaves cut back that root ball put it back in with fresh soil or amend it. You don't want it to go in there uh, without amending your soils. Uh, I prefer nice fresh soil. Uh, the nutrients are fresh. The plant thrives better. And uh, So that's how I overwinter a plant. And you all have a good day now. And that's my little video here on uh, overwintering your plants. As you can see it's an overcast day. It's also evening. If you are going to do this and you're in a sunny climate do it in the evening so that it can recover overnight where it's going to have its best recovery okay do not do this in the morning and then let it cook through the day it's gonna kill it okay I will tell you well it's not you know it's it's really gonna it's really gonna do a lot of damage it may not kill it but it'll come real close and I would prefer myself if I'm gonna do my plants I'm going to do it in the evening, preferably on an overcast day, and it'll maximize the, the recovery. Uh, yeah, that plant's ready to overwinter now. Y'all take care. We'll see you. Bye.